Welcome back to another battery charger review. Today I have the Claris K1 smart charger in for testing. Now I picked this up myself just to give it a try out and see how it stacked up. This is a USB power charger and I've shown you all the items you get included here. Just the cable and manual is the extra. And looking at the front of the box, just a couple of features listed at the top section. And if we flip it around to the side, it will give you the battery listings. This can accept quite a few different batteries. As you can see here, anything from nickel metal hydride up to the lithium cells and different voltages of lithium. Now on the back section, they've put a sticker on the spec and features. So I went on the website just to list them out so you can pause that and have a look there. You can see some of the charging methods. It's got a Delta V for the nickel metal hydride cells. It has automatic polarity protection and cut off and that just lists them all out there for you to have a look at if you want to. Cable length on the supplied micro USB cable is 2 foot or 63 centimetres, but you can use any cable if you have one lying around. And onto the instructions, fairly straightforward, didn't have any problems with this. And the unit is quite simple to operate anyway, so that's not particularly important, but the manual is up to scratch. On the unit itself, looking at it, the build feels pretty good on this. We have metal rail at the bottom and it's fairly smooth. And uh, the case material actually feels quite dense, certainly a step up from the cheap eBay battery chargers that I've used. There's some ventilation on the side slots there. There's nothing much else on the case, sides or the bottom. There's no USB output on this particular model. And on the back, we have a listing showing the output voltages and the charging voltages. Moving in closer to have a look at the top, you'll see there's a select button that's used for selecting the voltage for the lithium cells and the charging current and the LEDs are below that. We'll light them up shortly when we plug it in. Onto the contact points, we can see it's a flat one at the top. The only problem you can sometimes have with these is the very small cells, the triple A's or the double A cells. You might need to position them a bit more carefully and just the standard micro USB port, five volt input at the top. Now testing this out with a few different cells that I have, this takes everything from the very small lithium cells here up to a very large 26650. This is a protected cell as well and that fits in no problem. There's a bit of space there so you won't have any problems with the protected cells and it's a good fit too. It clamps the battery quite nicely even turning it upside down, no problems at all. Now powering this on you'll see as soon as you insert a battery, a lithium cell, you will have a choice of voltages. This does support the lithium iron phosphate cells. It defaults to the standard 3.7 lithium unless you change it. And if you long press on the select button, you can also adjust the output on the amps. You can see the four LEDs lighting up. That gives you the charge indicator as well. Inserting the 18650, and you can see it's automatically picked the 3.7 volt lithium. So, the only time you'll ever have to change that is if you're using the lithium iron phosphate or the 3.85 volts. This is a closer up shot just to show you switching between the half an amp and single amp output. Long press for that, and if you insert a nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cell, it will automatically detect that and you'll see the LED flash there. It's not possible to accidentally select a lithium voltage charge for nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cells. Now testing with a AA cell. And the same again, automatically selected the nickel metal hydride charging voltage. This test I'm just doing a reverse polarity test putting the battery deliberately in the wrong way around and you'll see the four LEDs the blue LEDs flashing up to let you know that there's a problem. Testing the charging speeds now at one amp and we get about the one amp mark bear in mind that the LEDs will probably draw a slight amount of current and as the charge progresses the charging rate will of course drop off. Now if you push the button lightly it will show you what the charge you have for the lithium ion cell is and if you long press you go down to half an amp and we can see the um, charging speed go down appropriately. What I'm doing is testing the voltage of the cell. We've got 4.18 volts which is uh, about spot on for a lithium ion charging cell. 
looking at the nickel metal hydride you can see it's using a pulse method of charging you can see the amperage varying that's the ideal method of charging for this type of battery you want a constant current for the lithium for this again I'm testing the termination voltage on the cell and I have 1.47 I'm looking for 1.45 to 1.5 so that's absolutely bang on the mark there so I'm very happy with the voltage terminations on this and I've been using this for a solid week not seeing any problems with overcharging or any obvious undercharging now the battery detection for fully charged batteries is quicker on the D4 it detects almost instantly it takes a few minutes on the Claris but that's not really a problem it also shuts off the charging after that period of time so a quick summary with the Claris K1 overall very happy with this a couple of small points it's not the smallest single cell charger around and that has to be said there are smaller ones like the Xstar Ant and it doesn't have a USB output port so you can't use it uh, for a charging as a power bank with a battery inserted on the other hand the plus points are you have a choice of charging speeds from half to a single amp. You can also accept multiple lithium cells, three different voltages, and nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium. A lot of small chargers will only accept lithium cells, so if you're someone that does charge AAs or AAAs from time to time, that could be quite useful. The charging cutoffs were also accurate, and it's using a delta V termination for the nickel metal hydride cells. Plus, the price of this is actually very good. I'm quite impressed with the package for the price, and I can give this quite a strong recommendation based on that.